So what can I tell you behind the team today? We talking about chaos in old world with the focus on Nurgle. Now the reason why I would like to talk about chaos in old world, and I'm starting this series on all four gods, is because not only does is the game very thematic, but on top of that, the strategy of the game also fits extremely thematically. To give you an example, the two times I played the game, I have I'm basically a beginner, right? But by using the lore I knew of the gods, the chaos gods, I actually could steal my strategy towards that and actually did okay, you know? So, very much so, I think if there is one game to talk about behind the theme, it's probably, this is one of the best examples. So, let's start with Nurgle. Now, the first thing I'd like to talk about is my favorite fact of Nurgle. Now, this is from the Warhammer RPG, and Nurgle... It, think of him like a herbalist or alchemist. He's working in his workshop, creating new diseases and everything. He's the Lord of Decay, the Lord of Pestilence. And the way he decides on how good a disease is from all his concoctions is that he actually tries it, mind you, on the goddess of healing and mercy, Shalia. He actually has her caged up in a cage. And what he would do, he would make the disease and try it on her. See how long she lasts before she heals and then decides whether he's got a keeper. That's absolutely amazing. I think it's one of the best written kind of lore. And to add on to it, that recently they also added a really nice character of Nurgles, which I like. He's called Epidamas. And he's basically um, Nurgles' chosen tally man. He's the cataloger of all of Nurgles' diseases, you know, the, the statistics and everything like that. And so he's got pretty much a full-time job as it is. And he's so burdened that he has to be carried on a palaquin by nurglings, which are little, great unclean ones. Oh, and he is also, of course, one of the seven protectors of pestilence. Now let's get to Nurgle himself. Now in the realm of chaos and everything like that, of the four great gods, Nurgle is the oldest. He's the oldest brother. And his sacred number is 7, and his symbol is the tripartite fly. Alright, or rather the three circles. How Nurgle plays in the game is very much, think of it like a disease. Alright, he only gets turn of the dial if he puts his tokens on a populous area, meaning there must be a population to put disease on. And very much so, like in the lore, what Nurgle is, is he is known to be extremely powerful to the level of corn and Zinch and all of that, but his power is not constant. Like a disease, it starts off slow. Think of it like a Street Fighter um, power meter, alright? You need to build it up first, meaning the disease has to basically stay there. It has to build up, just like a power meter. And then, it, when it is charged, it makes him supremely overpowered, almost overwhelming. And then when the disease wanes, he basically gets weaker. So, Nurgle's like a bell curve basically. Now Nurgle is also known by many names, you know, throughout the Warhammer history. He was example known as Niglen, Onogal, Nerglich, and among the Marauders of the North, he is known as the Lord of Flies, or rather even Plague Crow. But of course in the Empire and all he's well more well known as, you know, Papa Nurgle, Grandfather Nurgle, and names like that by his own cultists. Now from the names, I guess you can gather that among all the four gods, he is the most in tune to mortal suffering, mortals including elves, dwarves, and so on. And because of that, he almost has a paternal nature and almost a jovial nature. In fact, if you've seen almost any picture of Nurgle or the great unclean ones or Nurglings, they're always smiling and laughing. In fact, many a time, he probably say with a smiling face how he can release you from all this suffering and just like him, feel no pain to a certain extent. So in a way, it's a gift worthy of smile. Now his greatest rival is his brother Zinch, the changer of ways. And the reason why is the big difference is you can see the great um, dichotomy between the two is Zinch is very much preying on humans' hope of wanting change and so on and so forth. Whereas Nurgle preys on despair and hopelessness. That hopelessness is the whole reason why you would turn to Nurgle to stop the suffering. In fact, fun fact is that many of Nurgle's followers do not choose to worship him. It's they basically get sick to the point whereby they have nowhere else to turn and they want to end it, you know, end the suffering or maybe they're too afraid to kill themselves and then they turn to Nurgle to stop the pain. Now, the main infantry in the game for Nurgle is the Plague Bearers. Now, where do these Plague Bearers come from? Basically come from Nurgle's Rot. Nurgle's Rot is Nurgle's magnum opus, his piece of resistance. This is the best disease he has ever created. Of course, it's named after him. And on top of that, he has never bested it. 
And how does it all link to the plague bearer? Here's the thing. A person touched by Nurgle's rod becomes a plague bearer. So that's how he gets these demon infantry. It's basically from the people who he corrupted. Now, again, in the Warhammer RPG, they actually give you a whole breakdown on diseases and everything. And of course, Nurgle's rod is in there. And to show you how bad Nurgle's rod is, let me give you some stats on it. Nurgle's rod is not only a physical ailment, it's a spiritual one. Because again, remember, what Nurgle wants to do is break down your hope and put you in despair. So it literally it drains on your mind constantly. Because all this wow of incubation and the disease taking form, you are slowly turning into a black bearer and you see it. So, you know, it really f messes with you. Now, the incubation period for Nurgle's Rod is 1d6 plus 2 days. So you can do the math there. It's about 8 days at max. The treatment, there's none of that. It lasts for about 8 months. And the effects are you will get gradually turned into a plague bearer. The death rate is 100%. And the longer you last with Nurgle's Rod, the more powerful the plague bearer, mind you. You know, if, in fact, if you last long enough, you will even become a herald of Nurgle. And the whole process, mind you, in, actually takes place also in the realm of chaos, in the Garden of Nurgle. Now, you, this is, of course, the player in the Garden of Eden. I said you got a Garden of Nurgle, which is really, really horrible. And on top of that, you have these um, moldering willow trees, of which you have the fruit. The fruit are basically the people hit with Nurgle's Rod. And what it does is sucks on the soul of the uh, victim. And as it builds up, builds up, it becomes a bigger and bigger fruit. And when it ripens, the plague barrel comes out. So, you know, again, great law and history. And not in Warhammer, but to show how much, how, how powerful Nurgle's Rod is as a spiritual ailment, it even broke down a space marine legion called the Death Guard. You know, and space marines are super enhanced humans with mental training and everything. And, you know, a whole legion of them turned to Nurgle because the suffering was too much. The last unit you get in the game is, of course, the Great Unclean One. Now, these are the greater demons of Nurgle, all right? And what they are is basically almost a embodiment of Nurgle. And on top of that, they are filled with Nurglings, all right? And Nurglings also reside inside Champions of Chaos and everything like that. But when you hurt a, or cause a wound or an opening in a Nurgle character, what happens is these Nurglings come out. They're little versions of basically the Great Unclean One. And they, they basically come out, mind you, and this is said in one of the um, websites, they come out to protect their home, which is where they reside in, the Great Unclean One and so on. The Great Unclean One uses what is called a Plague Sword. And a Plague Sword is one of the most powerful Nurgle weapons. It's because each Plague Sword is dipped in the poisons at the base of Nurgle's throne. You know, so all that disease and everything like that, it's all been like festering at the bottom of that. This sword is dipped in it. And before we get to the a very fun fact with the Skaven and Nurgle, and how they are linked, let, let's all bring this together. What Nurgle does is everything is about staying on the board. And just like in the lore, what Nurgle does is he's slow, he's creeping. And you know, like in the start of a game of Chaos in the Old World, many times, if for corn and all, the person to hit is not really Nurgle because his units are firstly harder and tougher. And so he's not really a target. So slowly he takes to build and build and he gets more power in the power base. And then he starts to expand his power. And in fact, it's also reflected in the Tao is that he takes longer to get upgrades. But once he does, they're really good. And so the whole process of this slow plodding strategy, it's not a rush. In fact, if you go in just trying to fight everything with Nurgle, you're going to lose. In fact, there are cards in the game where you can sacrifice your units that are put in an error to get extra bonuses. It's all about staying on that board and then doing one big thing. Just like what Nurgle does in the law with all his diseases and how he fights. And this also leads into that fun fact now with Skaven. Now, one of the biggest questions you always get in the Warhammer world is the Skaven, they have the Horn Rat. But they also have Clan Pestilence, which spreads diseases. In fact, Clan Pestilence was the one that spread the Red Pox, one of Nurgle's most famous diseases in Bretonia. And so there have been several links and everything, but on average, what can be said is the Skaven worship the Horn Rat. There is no doubt about that as the primary god, but just like being polyistic in a way, 
the horn rat and the scaven don't mind using the god other gods to get to where they want to go and thus you know if it, Nurgle has a way to help their cause they'll do it in fact one of the the council of 13 is the arc plague lord with from class clan pestilence which is obviously linked to Nurgle so that is Nurgle chaos in the old world I hope you enjoyed let me know if there's anything that I missed any new interesting facts that you know about about Nurgle or any of the other gods and any other comments you might want to give so thank you very much till next week